Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, founder and CEO of Clean Machine. We are a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Why plant-based and fitness nutrition? Well, they kind of go hand in hand together. But as we're going to talk about, the plant-based nutrition can really help with depression. So let's let's dive into the research. A new study just came out. But before we get started, let me go ahead and get the disclaimer out of the way. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So the title, catchy. Uh, sad or standard American diet can make you sad. And this is what this study actually talks about. You know, the number of incidences in cases of depression has increased by almost 50% since 1990. The suicide rate is the second leading cause of death in young people age 15 to 29. That, that's, that's just horrible that we're, we're just not getting our heads right. And we have to look at diet uh, because diet plays such an integral role on how our brain functions. Obviously, you don't feed the body, you don't feed the brain. And if the brain's not fed well, it gets angry. <laughs> so I know this in bodybuilding competitions because uh, we uh, often use a technique called carb depletion, lowering our amounts of carbohydrates in order to get very, very lean. Of course, when you lower carbohydrates, this can cause dysfunction. Fortunately, it's only for a short period of time just to gain the appearance, and then we go back to eating mostly normal for the rest of the year at some people including myself. Uh, I found a way to actually not have to go to, uh, uh, to those extremes of carb depletion, just modifying my carbohydrate diet using lower glycemic, high polyphenol rich uh, uh, carbohydrates, uh, high prebiotic contents in the carbohydrates uh, to help modulate and actually improve fat burning so you don't have to cut the carbs as severely. Because cutting the carbs causes some major disruptions in the body's ability to process and utilize serotonin. And it's commonly known in the bodybuilding circles as coming hangry. It's a combination of two words, hungry and angry. <laughs> Your mood swings start to get really bad and you can get very testy and easily upset when you are carb depleted. Um, the brain fog can happen. Um, so carbohydrates actually uh, can help improve uh, and upregulate uh, serotonin. And I'm going to explain the mechanism of action on that in just a second. But I think uh, uh, the PCRM folks uh, did it even better. So I'm just going to read it directly from them. Plant sources of tryptophan include leafy greens, seeds and nuts, um, watercress, soybeans, pumpkin seeds, mushrooms, broccoli, peas. Uh, there's pea protein in clean green protein, uh, also green leafies and clean green protein, also omega-3s and clean green protein and polyphenols and clean green protein. Okay, so getting through the sales pitch, that's why I picked um, the the ingredients to go into this because I'm really keyed in it. I, I suffered chronically with uh, uh, clinical depression when I was in my early 20s and, and almost took my life twice because of it really struggling with suicidal depression. So um, when I talk about this, it's dear to my heart and even closer to my head and my brain um, because it wasn't until I had an emotional breakthrough with the help of uh, Buddy Sears, a good friend of mine, that I actually just instantly and intuitively went right to a high fruit, high green vegetable diet a uh, high whole food plant-based diet that really changed my mood and elevated me right out of depression, like rocket ship out of depression. And I've never really suffered a day of depression since then. That was March 14th, March 15th of 1985. So I'm so grateful to be 37 years free of depression. And it has a lot to do with diet and exercise. Exercise can help too. But why is that? Why is the diet so important? Well, <clears throat> Um, the amino acid tryptophan actually is the precursor to serotonin. So it converts in the gut, but the gut, the microbiome does about 70% of the conversion 
of tryptophan into serotonin, which then feeds the brain. That's our natural mood elevator. If you look at most antidepressants on the market, they are what they're called SSRIs or serotonin, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So what they do is they inhibit the serotonin from being reuptake where it would be broken down and recycled. So the serotonin keeps stimulating and keeps sending a positive signal to it. Now this can, well, I won't get into the negative effects because we're talking about uh, drugs at this point, but um, the better way is just to give your body an ample supply of serotonin. So, you know, most people think of serotonin, they think of turkey, right? High in serotonin, well, high in tryptophan, which then converts to serotonin. But actually, it's high in a lot of the amino acids, which, which actually compete with it at its receptor site. So listen to this explanation uh, from the PCRM folks. Competition from other amino acids prevents tryptophan from entering into the brain resulting in low serotonin production. A high protein meal thus leads to more amino acids in the bloodstream and more competition for tryptophan to enter the brain and making it more difficult from a pure meat, which has almost no carbs or no carbs in it, and all those aminos in the bloodstream with no carbs to upregulate that insulin, which can then pull the amino acids out of the bloodstream, leaving tryptophan to be able to enter the brain without the competition. So that's it in a nutshell, why carbohydrates along with your protein is usually very important to help you get that balanced effect and keep that competition from preventing the conversion of tryptophan to serotonin. Okay, but let's jump into this study because this study was pretty impressive and I'll go ahead and pull up the uh, uh, first study on the screen so you can see it. And uh, this study is the association of habitual intake of fruits and vegetables with depressive symptoms. This is the Oz uh, Diab study um, Australia, done in Australia. All right, so what did this study show? Well, pretty impressive results. They showed that uh, four to six different types of fruits and vegetables was associated with up to 42% lower odds of having depressive symptoms. Now, this is pretty phenomenal. Now, what they found was the variety of that really increased the benefits and the amount of polyphenols. So especially berries and dark greens, which are both very rich in polyphenols, these are the highest in polyphenols of most of the foods. Now, there are higher polyphenol ratios in spices like cinnamon and cloves and things like this. But as far as the foods that we eat for a mostly cal caloric value, we're looking at high polyphenol contents, high in berries specifically. But diversity, because there's different polyphenols in each of these fruits, like strawberries have physotin, uh, blueberries can have more of the catechins, um, uh, same with green tea. So there are different types of polyphenols or flavanols. There are um, all these different types of beneficial, healthful polyphenols. Now, the one thing is to note, obviously, that all polyphenols are only made by plants. There is no polyphenols in any animal product whatsoever. So if polyphenols is converting into actual metabolites that can become neurotransmitters and excite and light up the brain. Party in the brain, it's polyphenol time. <laughs> yeah. So let me show you what that actually looks like because this is a diagram from the study. I'll go ahead and pull the picture up on the screen. So this is, you got your gut bacteria down below and then you see polyphenols right above it. And then the bacteria actually consume those polyphenols and convert it into poly polyphenol metabolites. These metabolites then can actually feed and can turn into neuropeptides, which feed the brain. This can help us keep us in a brain positive mode. So the polyphenols have multifunctions here. They're neuroprotective, which means they're protecting the nerves of the brain and the cells of the brain, but they're also acting as neuro peptides and neurotransmitters for the brain, keeping the brain healthy, active, and engaged. This will keep our mood elevated as well. So let's jump into the, to the next study. The next study says, 
Um, particularly antioxidant rich foods, polyphenols are considered a class of antioxidants and other nutrients. Um, this study showed that omega-3 was also a powerful um, uh, effective uh, against depressive symptoms in patients. Um, B12 is an important uh, piece of keeping that nutrition profile up so that your brain functions properly. And then finally, D3 also plays a role as it regulates not only calcium, but serotonin in the body. Most people don't know that about D3. D3 is actually not a vitamin, it's a hormone. And it's a hormone that has lots of regulatory processes, uh, regulates uh, testosterone production, regulates uh, uh, serotonin production. Serotonin obviously is an important piece to uh, making us happy, right? The more serotonin, basically the happier we can become. So vitamin D3 is really important. And uh, I, I brought to market the first, well, you can barely even see it here, um, vegan D3. This is the first vegan D3 made from 100% organic algae. And it's interesting because it was used in a published human study back in 2020 that showed just a single dose increased plasma levels by 77%. It was so fast acting that the vitamin D took uh, the, the clients in the study from vitamin D deficient to vitamin D sufficient in just seven days. One week of using this vegan D3 called Veg D3. Veg D3 is what we use in this. This is the first 100% organic uh, vegan D3 from algae pure D3, no vitamin D2 in this. And you look at some of the other vegan D3s on the market, you're going to get a blend of VD, uh, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3 potentially. So like from mushrooms or lichen. So you want to, uh, that was my biggest concern with the vegan, vegan D3s that were on the market. It wasn't pure, it wasn't 100% pure, pure vegan D3. This is the first one that is a true one-to-one -one comparison with our own vitamin D3 and the only one that can be a one-to-one -one comparison uh, for animal vegan D3. So I'm always looking for the best to give you the best, but you can see how these all play in here. The clean green protein, high in polyphenols, high in fiber to feed that microbiome, to convert that vitamin D3 and getting that vitamin D3 in there so that you can uh, Im improve your serotonin levels as too, as well as your omega-3, I flower, the rich source of omega-3 of any plant in the world. All of these together, when you're taking these, you are not only building muscle, and staying fit and healthy, but you are also helping the brain function at its highest level, protecting the neurotransmitters and keeping that brain free of depression and keeping it happy, full of serotonin. All right, so some interesting questions. In this study, sometimes you have a problem with cause and effect. So which is the cause and which is the effect? Some would say, hey, if you're happier, you want to take better care of yourself like I did. Once I broke free of depression, that's it. I quit drinking. I quit smoking. I quit doing all drugs. I quit eating all animal products. I didn't want to do anything that harmed my body because I was happy about life. I wanted to live. I wanted to live my healthiest life. So is there a cause that do happier people just tend to eat healthier? Well, that's probably true. But is it because they eat healthier that they also become happy? Well, this study is actually showing that is actually true. Um, so I'll pull up the next study right here that we're going to look at, comment section. So this is a 2019 study concludes that certain foods rich in antioxidants and polyphenols can help with the depression. This shows also the vitamin D3, shows the, uh, 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 the omega-3 dosage too, as well as the effects. So let's look at the next study. This is a 2020 study. So this actually was a meta-analysis. It looked at 61 different studies and found that for some people, simply increasing fruit and vegetable consumption can improve mental health and emotional well-being. Boom, there it is. A review of 61 studies showing that it improved mental health and well-being 
emotional well-being. You are what you eat. You eat good food. You feel better. You feel literally in your mind, in your emotions better. Um, so let's take a look finally then at this polyphenol study. So the polyphenols got microbiota, interplay, and brain neurotransmitters. Let's dive into what they say in there. So increasing evidence suggests that food ingested polyphenols can have beneficial effects in neuronal protection, acting against oxidative stress and inflammation. So it's going in there and protecting your brain cells with those polyphenols. Second, polyphenols reported to promote cognitive functions. So it's actually making your brain work better, more efficiently. And that's because that previous picture that I just showed you, the polyphenols get chewed up and consumed by our microbiome. Then they poop out. <laughs> Thank you very much, microbiome. Um, we eat their poop. That's right. Uh, but those poop is metabolites. So polyphenol metabolites then act as neurotransmitters and neuroprotective agents. So we have a win-win. We're feeding our microbiome. They're growing and multiplying, being able to produce more beneficial metabolites, which are actually improving our brain function. So number three, biotransformation. That is our microbiota actually turning the polyphenols into these great metabolites. Um, the biotransformation of polyphenols is needed to attain metabolites active in brain and it occurs through the processing by gut microbiota. So this is showing the relationship between us eating the polyphenols and the microbiome actually turning it into, in a healthy microbiome. If you're doing a lot of drinking or drugs or not exercising or sedentary or a really bad standard American diet, your microbiome is going to be really weak. So even if you are putting in polyphenols, you're not going to get much of the metabolite of it. By eating a high fiber, high polyphenol, plant-based diet, you are upregulating all these microbiota that live in our gut that are then producing more and more of these metabolites. And it's these metabolites that actually help with our brain function and protect our brain so that we don't get into uh, advanced neurodegenerative uh, states. Um, polyphenols act as directly as neurotransmitters. And then further, the study says the impact of polyphenols on microbiota composition strengthens the idea that maintaining a healthy microbiome by modulating your diet, changing it to a mostly plant-based diet, is essential for having a healthy brain across the lifespan. Moreover, it's emerging that this could be used as novel therapeutics, polyphenols from fruits, greens, plants, berries, polyphenols could be used as a novel therapeutic to prevent, quote, unquote, prevent brain from neurodegeneration, end quote. That's powerful. That's why I am so into plants. <laughs> I love living life and I love living a healthy life. And I am in my 60th year of life and I'm just... I'm buzzing with this stuff because all of this health and nutrition is helping my brain function at peak levels, even well into my uh, late 50s and, and soon to be 60s. That's exciting. So let's recap. One, let's get more fiber into our diet. Fiber only comes from plants. Just basically eat more plant foods. You'll increase your fiber intake. And remember that just one serving of clean green protein gives you 31% of all the fiber you need for the entire day polyphenols, berries, spices. I do a cup of chai tea, uh, clove, uh, black pepper, and cinnamon, and black tea, all super rich in polyphenols. I get a mega dose of polyphenols just by having my chai tea in the morning. That's a great little tip for you. Then for my first actual food meal, I throw five to six different types of berries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, um, oh God, blackberries, just whatever berry is available to you out there. Um, even watermelon, watermelon is actually considered a berry. It's a really big berry, but it's still considered in the berry class. 
but any of these fruits with high polyphenol activity. Look it up, just type in polyphenol, high, polyphenol rich foods, look it up and, and then just put more and more of those into your diet. Um, if you don't want to do the fruits, I do uh, at the end of the day, sometimes I do uh, peanut butter. Now peanuts, are one of the highest in uh, polyphenols too. Really super rich polyphenol source is peanuts, cacao, super rich in polyphenols. So I mix peanut butter and chocolate, cacao, right? Rich, raw, organic cacao. So you're getting out all those antioxidants as well. And then throw in a little cinnamon. What a perfect mix, a little uh, maca in there to give it a malted flavor. And you got peanut butter, chocolate, cinnamon, malted throw some bananas in there for some extra fiber and bananas have serotonin and tryptophan in them too. So you're getting just a big dose of happiness in that smoothie. Throw in a scoop of, of uh, clean green protein in there. You've got peas, which are high in the uh, polyphenols as well, polyphenol rich as well as, this is 69 milligrams of polyphenols just in a single scoop. Plus you're getting all the protein that you need for that tryptophan, remember tryptophan is an amino acid, one of the nine essential amino acids found in plant proteins. And then exercise, exercise boosts mood. That has been well established. The more you exercise and the higher intensity you exercise, the actual mood be uh, benefits go up. So get in there, get in the gym, eat lots of polyphenol fiber rich foods and have a happy day. Uh, hit me up with any of your questions about any of the research. I'll post it all online. Plus, I'll post some uh, smoothie ideas for you too as well. Hope you have a happy, healthy day and enjoy your workouts. Thanks for joining me.